Hi, this is Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a video about keeping an illustrated journal. An illustrated journal is a visual diary of your life. Usually when I post about illustra illustrated journal keeping, it is connected to my travels. It's a travel sketchbook. But today I want to talk about something that's even more important, and that is keeping an illustrated diary of your day-to-day -day life. We are about to go into the holidays as I'm making this, and I don't know about you, but for me, it's fun and it is hectic, which is why you need to get your pages going so you can get stuff down during the next few weeks, during the rest of your life, before those days get away from you. I know you can take photos. I take photos. I take lots of photos. But I promise you that getting your days, your memories on a page is so much more personal. It is a powerful way of witnessing your own life. I found this while preparing for this video. This is from 2006. And it's, I think, the second book I ever kept. And I really, really couldn't draw at all. I mean, I don't, drawing's not my strong card now, but uh, boy, I was <laughs> like a, a four-year-old here. But that's okay. It didn't stop me. I had a book, very cheap book, I might add. I think it cost me about four bucks. And I had a glue stick. And I just started putting stuff down and making notes making bad, imperfect drawings, and writing about them anyway. And this is 14 years old. This was all so vivid and so great, and I would not remember it. I wouldn't remember a fourth of this if it wasn't down in my book. So I'm really grateful that I started doing it badly. Now, in a couple of minutes, I am going to come to my proper blank book and talk about some prompts and hacks for uh, keeping your diary in the next hectic few weeks. But first, I want to say that if you have good art supplies and a blank book, that's great. You are a step ahead of the game. What are you waiting for? But you don't need those things to get started. Every time I post one of these illustrated journal tutorials, I get comments that say things like, dang, I've been meaning to do this forever. Or, you know, I really should do this. You really should. And you don't need anything to get started today except a notebook, and a pencil. That's the least amount you need to get started keeping an illustrated journal. And I'm going to show you. I'm always saying use what you got. And if this is what you got, this is a notebook that I got, you know, at the supermarket. It was about $1.50. I found this pencil when I was walking and picked it up. That's all you need. Use what you got. No excuses. Another thing that I have that's free that I'm going to show you with this is these magazines. These are free food magazines from my lo local supermarkets. And in one of them, I found a recipe for how to roast figs. So last night I was cutting and preparing figs and I just decided just to do a pencil drawing with a little bit of shading. Now I realize these could be aubergines, these could be eggplants or gourds, but they're not, they're figs. That's why we give it labels. And now I can remember even though this is not fancy, I could keep this page and remember last night when I was preparing 
to roast figs and what we were talking about. And it's a good memory. Uh, another way you could do that is in the magazine, there was a picture of the figs. So I just cut that out this morning to show you that even if you think you can't draw a bad egg-shaped fig, you could take this picture, glue it onto your notebook page, and then over here, write about how you prepared them and what you think about them. Maybe look up a little bit of history of figs and botanical stuff and get some notes down. Hey, presto, you got a page. Here is uh, an, another example of how you could just take a cheap notebook and get started. This is my watch. Doesn't get much more every day than that. I drew this with an ink pen. A lot of ink is water fast, but some ink is water soluble. And you just have to experiment and find out. Which means that if you mix it with water, if you add water, like I'm doing with this brush, it turns into a kind of a, an ink, a wash. So I did a very, not very precise drawing of my watch. And now I'm just going to pick up the color with my water and work into it just a little bit and just really make a mess with that wash. And I have a really funky stylized page. So use what you've got. If all you have is a notebook and a pen and a pencil, start your illustrated journal today. If you like journal arts, arts journals, and altered books, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notifications, and you will have more of them in your life. Next, I want to talk about some of the pages that I've been working on and some ideas and hacks that uh, I hope will inspire your pages, give you something to jumpstart. I am using my latest blank book. It's one that I have made myself, tea dyed pages, loosely bound into a vintage book cover. Let's see, over here, a uh, few days ago, I had a picnic. I had time to get down some visual notes and uh, a little bit of color, but I didn't have time to write about it at the time because I was too busy really enjoying it. You have to balance out getting the pages made and being present when you're living them. So I made some notes here about some things that uh, I wanted to remember. And now uh, this evening with a cup of tea, I'm going to go back and fill in the text. You can write down what you find on a walk. It might be a stone, a twig, a feather. It doesn't have to be that interesting. It's really more about your day. I've been picking up leaves lately to make echo prints with. And um, that means I've been spending a couple of, a few days in the forest. And it's wonderful. I'm pretty sure I will forget about that wonder if I don't write about it. So I took one of the leaves put it aside, drew it, and wrote about it. And again, I've made some notes here because there's some other things I want to remember and get down. Ah, draw your clothing, your clothes and stuff, especially if you're changing seasons. Uh, we're in November now, and um, I live in Wales. We don't really have a too dramatic a winter, but it is getting blusty or blusty, blustery, blustery, more blustery. So I have got out my mitts and I'm crazy about mitts. I have several pairs and look, 
these are they. I love mitts so much that I could write about them for pages and pages. I'm also, I also have a new used Timberland jacket in olive green that I'm going to draw a picture of uh, this weekend that I got at a thrift store. So draw your, whatever your seasonal stuff is. More figs. Draw what you're eating, what you're enjoying, what you're cooking. A really good page is if you have a favorite recipe, you might want to write down that recipe as a list and then draw some of the ingredients. But fresh fruits and veg make beautiful pages. So draw your food. One of the ironies about being a book artist and thriving is that it means I have not nearly as much time to actually read books as I would like. But I am making my way through this stack here. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is make some little notes about each one of them. You know, maybe a little bit about the plot or probably more about what I, I thought of it when I was reading it. So you can make a page of what you're reading or watching or if you were pretty uh, inspired you could even do your podcast you know just something so what 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 are you doing in your day well one thing i do in my day several days a week is i go running so i drew a map maps make great journal pages especially stay at home journal pages if you are going to be visiting friends or family in the next few weeks, that's even better. Draw the neighborhood that you're visiting before it gets away from you. You can draw a floor, floor, floor plan of your apartment or house, or you could even just draw a room. Draw a rectangle, add a window, add a chair, and write about it. Let's see. Uh, when I say running, what I mean is trotting. I trot um, because I have old lady legs, but trot I do. And this is where I live. And I go here. Da -da. This is Swansea Bay and uh, the beach. And so I go. Nee, 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 nee. So there's my map of something that means a lot to me in my life. And maybe in a few years, I won't be able to do this. And I'll be glad that I did something about it. Like this. Again, I wanted to, for this, I used a charcoal pencil. Because again, I want to show that you don't have to have watercolors or uh, fancy stuff. Let's see. I uh, When I started trotting earlier this year, I, my, my, trainers my tennis shoes were over five years old so i had to go out and buy some more i'm kind of frugal uh let's see so i wrote about that i these are in my flat not in my studios but so i, I just made some notes about the colors that i wanted to add navy and gold well you know what i don't have i've got some crayons here and I don't have crayons in navy or gold, but I'm gonna use what I have. I've got blue. So I'm gonna add some blue. And I'll finish coloring that over previously mentioned tea. I don't have gold, but I have yellow. Dang it. And so I can add in the trim like that. And it's going to be fine. It will do the job of reminding me about the first pair of running shoes that I bought in five years. Let's see. Ah, I, I uh, never liked the gym and COVID gave me an even better excuse not to go. I do, however, like to lift light weights. So, um, these are all piled up in the bedroom window 
that I was just mentioning it, if you were to like go all the way over here, you'd find that stack of books I just showed you. It's right here. So I do my weights. I want to stop here and talk about lettering. Now I do some lettering. Uh, I was lucky enough to learn to do that and get better at it. But if you don't, one, you just need to letter and print anyway. Two, you can use found words. Now, remember these, these free magazines. I like to use them as pictures. And then before I recycle them, I go through them and I see if there's any cool found text in the ads. It said plant-based. Ant-based looks fun, more fun, doesn't it? Ant-based. Now, let's see. This says in season. And I'm thinking, I could go back here to where my mitts are. And we're talking about seasonal clothing. I could add that right there, in season. I could just glue it down, and it's going to make a nice little element to this page. So I'm going to be doing that. Over here, let's see. This is from two different ads. And I'm thinking uh, one of the reasons that I do this is because I wanted to have more control over some health issues. So I could take this and add these two together like a little collage almost. And now it says the power to make, oops, no, it doesn't. The power to make one change. And I can get that down there. It's going to add interest to the page. And it's also going to be a jumping up prompt for me. I can now go up here and write about why this is meaningful to me. So I will also be doing that. Finally, one last word about found text. This was an ad in the, the food magazine. And yeah, I just went through it looking for stuff that popped out and, and gave me ideas. And I saw this. There's only one way to, we know what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue this on my page. And when I meet with friends over the holidays, I'm going to hand the book to them and I'm going to say, quick, there's only one way to what? And I'm going to ask them to not really think about it and then to write down their thoughts. There's only one way to, and you can have your, they may be the, add a thumbnail, little drawing, or they could add a couple of sentences and you can just hand it round and let people participate in your journal. They will love it and it will help deflect a little bit of the criticism that you may get from drawing at the table. Just saying. I am going to make a list of some of the ideas in these pages as prompts, and those prompts are going to be in the text below this video. So you can go and find those. Please, while you are there, you will see a link to my online newsletter. And if you like free vintage paper ephemera scans and pep talks and fashion and fun and art tutorials, please join me and subscribe to my newsletter. I'd be very grateful. If you have any feedback or questions, let me know in the comments below. Until later, get up and go make some pages.